Alright, what is going on guys? It's Paul one and today we are back with another Deatomizer Strike gameplay. And uh, today we're watching a, a Deatomizer Strike on Terminal, the Terminal Remake by Carnage Enigma. If you want to check out his channel, his link will be right at the top of the description below. He's currently on the road to 10,000 subscribers. And I really think you'll enjoy his content over there. He does a lot of live gameplays. And personally, I think he's like really funny, pretty entertaining when he's actually going for gameplays live. And I think you guys will agree. So definitely go to his channel, check him out. And if you guys could drop a like on today's video, that would be awesome. Let's go ahead and jump right into today's topic. So today we're going to be talking about 10, the top 10 uh, weapons that Samurais use. And I think it would be cool to see some of these added into Black Ops 3, maybe Infinite Warfare, uh, but especially the first one. The first one is Ninja Throwing Stars. Here's a picture of them. And these are really cool. And I didn't know that they were actually used uh, to be thrown at the enemy as a distraction. So you basically like, if you were about to like get in a fight, you'd throw them at them really quick, throw them at your enemy. And that would give you time to pull out your weapon because the other guy's going to be like trying to avoid getting hit by these flying knives or flying daggers that would literally like could kill you or like destroy you. That would hurt. Uh, so that's the first thing. They're pretty cool. Now the second thing is punching spikes. Now these samurais were savages, man. Punching spikes? What the heck? They're basically little rings that they would wear. They would wear maybe even multiple of them uh, in some cases. And they basically use these to like, if like an enemy like got too close, they'd punch them in the face with this and they would literally like, this could mess you up really bad, distract the enemy. And yeah, they were like referred to as like knuckle dusters so pretty intense the third one is chains and weights basically like a chain with two weights on either side and the side that would be used as the weapon would have usually like a spiked weight or a bigger weight so pretty intimidating and like pretty gruesome man like th like it's there's some crazy weapons that they used back then uh, but not really too interesting now the fourth one is like this little dagger uh that was basically called uh trunch truncheons or truncheons i don't know how to pronounce it exactly um uh, but it's it's pretty fancy it's an old Japanese weapon that they would use as a concealed dagger for defense. So, um, you know, not really a weapon, but like if someone were to uh, like try to assassinate him or come out of nowhere, they would have this concealed. Um, but it would be considered like as a police weapon and really wasn't like it was used to capture criminals or targets and stuff like that. Not like a, a weapon in battle. The next one's really interesting. It's called the Iron Beak Staff. And this was used by samurais and people of that time to tear down like walls or housing uh, to prevent fires from spreading. It would sometimes be used as a weapon but mainly like if let's say there was two huts that were connected and a fire started in one of them they would use it to tear down like a section in between so that the fire didn't spread from one area to another so kind of interesting uh now the next one is called sickles and chains this one's really savage man like what the heck is going on it's a sickle uh that's basically like has a curved blade used to cut plants and grass it was common across the medieval world like in the middle ages and stuff and it was also used as a heavy duty weapon also a chain was attached and was like at the bottom um and would really mess an enemy up if used but the the, uh, the chain of the weight section is spun around and keeps an enemy at bay or is used to like uh, en ensnare an opponent to like kind of get them wrapped up and all messed up and stuff. There's also a rope that they would use that would use to like, they would throw this like little hook and it would sometimes like get in an enemy's like ear or mouth or like eye or stick into them and then they would pull them in and then wrap the rope around them to kind of like uh, subjugate them or like put them at rest. Final ones, uh, that I the next one I want to talk about are these like pole arms of capture. These would use be used like by police. Now, uh, here's an image of them. The T-shaped we're going to talk about first, then the middle one we're going to talk about next, and then the U-shaped uh, last. T-shaped is basically like a spiked cross bar that can be pushed past the target, hooking them, and then bringing them in. So, like, you'd put it around, like, one of the T-sides, put it, like, on their back, bring them in, and it would, like, you know, stab their back and really hurt. The next one is the barbed rake, and it would be used to claw and attach to, like, enemies' clothes, help them to them or put them down. It can obviously kill an enemy, too. Uh, then the last one is the U-shaped, which is, like, basically, like, you would use it to, like, put around the enemies or uh, uh, criminal's neck, push them against a the wall, or maybe their arm to restrain them or keep them from moving. Uh, the next one's utility spikes and knives. It's pretty interesting. It's basically just like, uh, there's a whole, like, they don't exactly know what it is. Like, these two, like, knives on either side of the sword when you put it back into its sheath. They believe that it was, um, used, uh, the spike was used for piercing one's ear of a decapitated head so that identification tag would be attached and the name of the victim written upon it. The, uh, spike is also used to push the tongue back into the head as a protruding tongue from a head is considered unseemly. So very, very gruesome stuff. And then the final one is the classic longer blade and the shorter blade. The longer blade would be used in front and the shorter blade behind. And uh, obviously longer blades for more distance, the shorter blades for like closer distance and more like poking and stuff. Uh, so some pretty crazy stuff. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you guys want to hear more topics like this, let me know down in the comment section below. If you want to like, if you want a topic that you want us to discuss, leave that down below as well. Like this could be really fun, I think, if we include these 
fun topics alongside interesting and fun fast-paced like Deanimated Strike gameplays and stuff. And I think it would be even more fun if you guys got involved and actually like gave us feedback of different topics you want to be discussed. So please do that down in the comment section below, something you think would be interesting. Uh, once again, drop a like on today's video. Go check out Carnage Enigma's channel. His link will be right at the top of the description below, guys. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day, and I will talk to you all later.